Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, depending on where you are in the world and when you're watching this. My name is Nathan Allen. I'm a staff editor at Poets and Quants and uh, here to kick off our online MBA backstage event with a great international panel of schools and representatives. Uh, so I'm gonna go do a brief intro for everyone, just go through the names and then, and then we'll dive into the first questions. So um, from Imperial, in London, we have um, Amy Duckworth, who is the Director of Admissions there. And then from ESMT in Berlin, we have Rebecca Lodes, who is the Director of the Career Accelerated Programs. And then from the University City, um, London, University College in London, we have Ashley Young, who is the MBA Admissions Director and then from IE in Spain, we have Andreas Collins, who is the global recruitment manager there. If I messed up any names or anything, uh, correct me. Uh, feel free to do that, definitely. Um, and we will go ahead and get started. First, um, I'll direct this first question to Andreas. Um, so go ahead and prepare yourself. Uh, but real simple question to get started. Just tell us about the program. How long has it been around? Um, how long does it generally take to complete the program for most people? And then any sort of flexibility you wanna share in terms of um, classes and that sort of thing. Um, so Andreas, we'll start with you. Yeah, thank you, um, Nathan, for, for that introduction. And as, as you said, my name is Andreas Tassi, I'm a Global Recruitment Manager here at IU University for the Global Online MBA. So this program was launched more or less 20 years ago. We were pioneers in, in online education. Um, and we've, we've been doing the program ever since, basically. Of course, the program ha has evolved all throughout the years. And um, so in terms of flexibility, this program is la last 17 months, it's a standalone program, but you can, you can uh, elongate it up to 30 months. So the way it works is the, the first two terms are um, with, 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 with your classmates, with everyone. But then the last term, which is the electives and, um, uh, and the tax module, you can elongate the program. Uh, so you can do it at your own pace and you can add two additional terms. So that's the, the flexibility factor. Of course, well, there are classes online every single uh, for, uh, Saturday for three hours and a half. Classes are live with professors, with your, with your classmates. There's no self-study modules or anything of that sort. So you always be accompanied by, by professors and, and by your classmates trying to emulate a, a real life classroom, basically. And then there are forums open Monday through Thursday and forums is where most of the participation takes place um, and students can enter the forums whenever they have some time available, available during the day. Um, but it's, it's the asynchronous part of the program. And yeah, so that, that's in a nutshell, a little bit of, of the flexibility of the program and, and the way the structure works. Great, thank you. Amy, we'll move to you next. Um, tell us about the program at Imperial. Yeah, sure. No problem at all. So um, at Imperial, we launched the Global Online MBA program in 2015. Um, and really since then, um, it's it's gone from strength to strength and it's it's won several awards. And um, we're now ranked uh, number one online MBA in the UK. Uh, that's in the QS rankings and number two um, in the QS rankings in the world. Um, and number three in the Financial Times um, online MBA rankings. Um, in terms of flexibility, we recently updated the program to give some additional flexibility um, and you can now actually choose whether you want to complete it in 21, 24 or 32 months. Great thanks and we'll move to Rebecca next. Thank you oh my word I am the new kid on the block uh, so effectively our program launched this year we launched in September so kind of we're just approaching uh, we've got a second module it's a modular approach which means that we have that the minimum time is two years but actually you can extend that to five years so therefore this is a super super flexible program two intakes a year because we want to create uh, that there is an initial point so module zero foundation module you with your cohort but then you can decide at that point do I pause? Do I continue? So therefore you can determine the cadence to fit around your life. We also have super flexible payment schedules as well. So therefore that's something that really is trying to make certain that we make the program as accessible as possible. Um, and so, yeah, so kind of like we are, we are, we are longer, 
but actually that's completely up to you and a couple of different ways of kind of entering into the program and then paying for it. And ours is mostly self-paced um, with weekly kind of live sessions with our teaching team. Great. Love the uh, idea about having the flexible payment schedule. That's that's cool. Um, Ashley, tell us a little bit about yeah. you, your program. Happy to, happy to jump in. We're also quite a young program, so uh, not quite the new kid on the block, but certainly been around for a couple of years. Um, the UCL MBA is, is, is a program which was launched in, in 2019. Um, it was really designed from the ground up, and I think that's one of the elements that makes the program fairly unique. Um, it wasn't a it wasn't an, an option of essentially taking from our from our um, uh, on campus programs, taking select modules and kind of plumping them together and offering an MBA. It was built from the ground up. Uh, we built each and every single one of the modules, and uh, where the flexibility comes into in, into the program itself, it can be completed in as little as twenty four months or up to a maximum of sixty months. So essentially giving students that complete flexibility to choose how they would like to take this program. It is designed for the working professional. Uh, so what it looks like is you have the opportunity to either take two modules, one module or no modules in a particular term, uh, depending on your particular schedule or um, all the requirements that you may have around personal or, or professional commitments. Uh, we do also offer a series of core modules, compulsory modules that are a part of the program. You have a, a, large, a large grouping of elective modules, and of course that culminates into a capstone project. So students have the, the complete flexibility to, to go through those modules as long as they've, they've of course, um, uh, taken the, the compulsory or the, the, um, the prerequisite modules. And um, we also do have the, the ability around flexible payment options, um, and um, that allows students to really pay for the module as they uh, pay as you go type strategy as you go through the course content, uh, rather than uh, large upfront payments um, associated to the program. Love the pay as you go model, definitely. That's awesome. Um, so this next question is, I'm going to change it a little bit for the new kids on the block and the newish kid on the block. Um, so we'll start with the new kid on the block, Rebecca. What was it like launching a program in the middle of a pandemic? To be honest, I mean, it's, this is an online program. So in a certain sense, the pandemic actually we've been investing in online learning and on remote delivery since 2017. So therefore, this is not something that we have decided to do. This has been in the pipeline for four years. Uh, and really, as Ashley said, you know, it's like developing and delivering and launching an online MBA program. There is so much more rigor that goes around it because every single moment of a student's experience of your program is planned, is scheduled, is thought about. And so therefore the pandemic was one thing, but actually just getting it kind of like really carefully thinking about the program that you're launching and making sure that you are doing it at the right time. And then of course, finding the stellar bunch of students, which I'm super proud that we attracted into our first cohort. Great, and Ashley, we'll move to you next. What was it like launching in 2019 and then having these major uh, potential disruptions from the pandemic? Absolutely love this question. And I think, you know, as, as we previously mentioned, this program is, is quite a young program, launched in 2019, pre-pandemic. And um, it was quite fortuitous at that time where um, the world just went into this whole mode of, of looking at online education and looking at, at what that meant for the landscape. Um, it is a, sort of a program that uh, it, it wasn't something that we just decided we would develop this program and go online. Um, it, it, it had nothing to do with the pandemic. We had already made that conscious decision a couple of years ago in, 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 in going through the initial approvals for the program, having it vetted, and, and um, uh, we had, had taken that decision that it was going to be an online program. Uh, we were very, very deliberative, uh, deliberate rather than in terms of building the program and putting it together the way we, we wanted to. Uh, we've had great success in, in launching the program um, over the time period. I think the, the interest in online education just from a global landscape has, has, has really um, allowed this program to evolve. Uh, we do offer four intakes per year, which is quite unique. Uh, so we have an uh, opportunity to join the program in, in October, January, uh, April, as well as July. So it, it really does give an extended flexibility within that. And, and really meeting people where they're at. And uh, it's, been, it's been a wonderful opportunity to, to get faculty in, involved from all different uh, spheres of, of the institution and, and getting involved in, in developing a new and, and exciting program, which, which brings a fresh energy to the environment. Great, thank you for that. And we'll move back to uh, the regularly planned questions for, for, Ash, or for uh, Andreas and Amy. Uh, lots of A names today. Rebecca, the only one not with the A name on that one. Um, 
So Andreas, we'll, we'll start with you. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about maybe some of the uh, bigger evolutions of the program that you all have had over the years and then anything that changed um, since the start of the pandemic? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And, and because the, the program here at IE combines residential modules with, with a big online component, those residential modules in our campus were, was perhaps the biggest challenge no, to, to do during the pandemic. Uh, there are a total of, of three weeks uh, in which students come to campus. And what we did during the pandemic is that we adapted every single classroom and all our, all our campus to, to stream all, all classes. So classes were, those students who were able to come to campus, they, they did come to campus and, and campus was, was open for, for ever since, since July last year. Um, so those who weren't able to come, they, they were still able to, to attend those classes, but from their homes. And this option was, was quite popular and, and we did so well that we have actually implemented it for, for the time being, for the duration of, 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 of the program in the future as well. So now um, the Global Online MBA will have three residential periods as well, but those residential periods, students can come to campus if they can, if they can't because their schedules don't, don't, don't allow it, because they can't come because of COVID restrictions, because of border restrictions or anything, they can still attend those residential modules from their homes or from wherever they are. Great, thank you. And Amy, same question for you. Um, so as I mentioned um, earlier that we recently updated, um, we updated the program um, and to, to, give, um, to give our students more, more flexibility, more choice um, in terms of tailoring the program. Um, so we've got, um, we've introduced FlexCore um, modules um, and we've got elective modules and we've introduced new modules, um, for example, in analytics, entrepreneurship um, and, and marketing. Um, I think as um, Andrea said with the, um, we, we do have, um, we have some on campus elements to the program as well but obviously with the pandemic um you know that we, we had to adapt those um, and we were able to use our multi-mode delivery method which we used for our um, programs which would normally be delivered in person and um, so that allowed our students um you know when, when restrictions started to ease that allowed students who could come on campus to do so but those who couldn't could still join um join remotely um and i think i just wanted to pick up on one of the points that um that was raised earlier about um, the, the difference in, in design between programs that have been designed for online delivery and programs that have just shifted online because of the pandemic. And I think it's important, um, you know, there is a global trend, but partly, you know, because of COVID, there's been a global trend towards online education, but actually it's a really important distinction between programs that would normally be delivered on campus, sort of having to go remote and programs that are online by design, which we see, um, you know, our, our program is as, as is, um, that as is the, as are the programs of, of my colleagues on the panel today. Right. Yep. Um, so before we move to the next question, I just want to remind participants um, listening in right now that you all can throw some questions in the chat. Um, I've got like a million questions to ask them. So we'll see if we have time for yours, but go ahead and throw them in and, um, and we'll, we'll address those as they come up. Um, so I want to talk about key differentiators uh, between your program and um, others. So, uh, Ashley, we'll we'll start with you on this one. Can you tell us about some of the the key differentiators for you all? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I, I think one of the big, the big uh, key differentiator is is this is a fully online program. It's um, it at the same time what it does is it doesn't detract from the normal in person classroom experience that you would get from the traditional university experience. Um, but what it does is it brings the best of the in-person classroom to the digital environment. And, and I think that is something that we've been super intentional about in terms of the way we've designed our program. Um, it's it's that, that whole concept of um, bringing the classroom to the digital environment. So classroom-based delivered online. And I think that in itself is, is, is quite a unique element where you have these um, weekly live classes with um, with faculty and as well as your global classmates, where you're coming into an environment and having deep, rich conversation, um, which is 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 poised and, and and tailored to the particular content that you would have gone through. Um, our program also is is designed for the working professional, and what that means is you you're not having to quit your job. Um, you can really take this program from anywhere in the world. You can do it as a as um, as essentially a part time program on the side uh, with working full time. Um, we also have in, in our program this golden thread woven through 
through each of the core modules, the elective modules, as well as the capstone project, which is this, this idea of dealing with data and dealing with uncertainty. We know those are such important elements in the modern business world, and, and we've really worked that into the curriculum and, and making sure that we're, we're tying, this, um, tying this together throughout the entire program, um, making sure that our students are equipped with the right skill sets to, to develop themselves as, as future business leaders and leaders within their own rights already uh, to, to deal with data and deal with uncertainty in the changing world. And um, those are just some of the key differentiators, I think, that, that make our program some, somewhat unique to some of the others out there. Great, thank you for that. Andreas, we will move to you next. What are some of the key differentiators at the program at IE? So this program um, is, is combines face-to-face -face sessions in Madrid with, with a big online component, as I just mentioned. So that, that's that's the first part. So it's part in a blended methodology, you know, so students can can complete the program 100% online or they can come and, and do or have a blended experience. Um, that's for starters. Also, this program has a tracks module. The last term which is, a, is a tracks module and, a, and the electives module where students can choose between um, doing a, a strategic management track, a marketing track, or a fintech and, and and financial markets track, so that's also a key differentiator. Um, and and this program, um, it's, it's it's also very collaborative. It's, it's and it's also the idea is to not only learn from professors but also from your fellow classmates. And we're looking for those students that can add value in class. You know, that's those students that are points of references in the industries or the companies that they that they work for. Um, and, and yeah, ultimately, it, it, our classes are, are with professors, they're live, so there's no self-study uh, modules or anything of that sort. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a version of an MBA, but in an online environment. Great, thank you. Amy, we will move to you next. What are some of the key differentiators at Imperial? Um, I think, broadly speaking, at, at Imperial, um, our focus is, is on the, the fusion of business and technology. Um, and, and I think that that comes from our parent institution, which is um, Imperial College London, which is a renowned STEM institution. So that's really part of who we are as a business school. And, and that's part of, of, of the makeup of our programs. So I think that's the first thing. thing and, and that's what, um, what a lot of candidates, um, what attracts a lot of candidates is that, you know, that, that technology innovation, and also entrepreneurial focus. Um, I think um, the combination of online and then opportunities to come on campus, um, for example, coming on campus for induction, we also have the capstone module on campus, and we, we also have the opportunity to do electives in person. Um, so really, it, it's, you know, you can kind of get the, the best of, of both worlds in that, you, you know, you don't need to, um, you don't need to leave your job to do this program, it can fit around your career. But also you do get, um, you do get to, to come to Imperial and to immerse yourself in, in the community and, and, um, and, you know, meet, meet, for example, at Imperial, we have other MBA um, cohorts as well. We have the full time program, the weekend MBA program, the executive program. So it'll be opportunity for you to to network with with those MBA students as well. Um, I think those are the main things that I would um, that I would highlight. Great. All right, and Rebecca, um, okay. finish us I mean, out. Bring us home. Well, <laughs> I, I told. I think so. We are a fully online program and we offer these live sessions which are offered twice uh, so to really meet the needs of students based around the world because we have a super international cohort base. What I really think sets our program apart is really the structure. So what we've done is you start off with a, a foundation module, module zero, which kind of grounds you, sets the tone with a program that's got virtual collaboration at its heart by ensuring that you're equipped in order to really maximize your experience of the program and your experience of working with others in teams and some of the challenges which happen when you're working with kind of colleagues in a virtual environment. And then each module, which can be taken in any order, for instance, I, the way that we've structured it is that the three courses within a module are actually closely integrated. So there is a there is a theme that runs through them and they are bound by an overall goal. So our first module, module one, is around making wiser decisions in uncertainty. So we approach that core challenge, which I think all decision makers how you know are facing we look at it from a from a data perspective so that gives you kind of look at it in the numbers then we also look at it from the 
ethical? What's the implications of the decisions I'm making? What do I need to do? And then we also look at it from the organizational, because obviously you may well make a decision, but it's how you actually carry and implement that decision, which will kind of be fundamental to its success. And that's just one of the modules. So I think we put a lot of thought into how we bring together it is a general business program, so how we bring together the foundational and fundamental elements of a general business education in a way that really makes a lot of sense for a student. And then we have electives and we have a real world capstone, but it's really making certain that we equip students to be um, the kind of like modern decision makers. Those are that I would say kind of like is the real value. And also our MBA, it's still the same triple accredited globally recognized program the MBA, whether you learn earn it in our full time format, in part time format, and in the online format, you are still earning an ESMT Berlin MBA program. Great, thank you for that. Um, for the next one, we'll start with Amy. Um, and what I think uh, would help out a little bit is so say I'm a student, I'm looking to be a student in an MBA program, I'm trying to decide between online part-time and a full-time normal residential program. What are some things I should consider and what makes the online MBA program right for me? Yeah, sure, that's a, a good question. I think it's important um, that there's, well, there's a few different factors to consider. And I think um, that it's important that, that candidates take time to, um, to, give, to, to really um, work out what their motivations are for doing the MBA and, and also how they would prefer to learn and, and what learning environment they think suits them best. So, for example, if they want to fit the MBA around their current professional life and their or, and or their family, um, you know, they don't want to leave their job, then an online MBA is 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 a great option. Um, but for example, um, you know, if if they're planning, um, you know, if, if they're planning to um, switch sector, um, for example, if they want to do a triple jump, they want to switch um, functions, um, they want to switch functions, section and uh, sector, sorry, sector and location, and they want to get some international experience while, whilst doing that, then perhaps relocating to do a one year full time program would be would be a good option. Um, you know, if you're kind of if if you um, if you aren't looking to do that and you don't want to relocate, um, then actually that the online MBA does give you the best of both worlds because you can get the you can get some of the in person elements of a full time program um, depending on the you know if at Imperial's MBA, um, but you you know you don't have to take that time out of work and you don't need to take a break in your career and depending on you know what your what your what your goal is taking a break in your career might not be the right thing for you to do either for you you know given your professional circumstances or your personal circumstances. Great. Uh, Rebecca, let's uh, move to you next. What sort of advice do you have for, um, you know, the applicant who's considering um, a range of MBA programs? To be honest, I, I really agree with Amy. I mean, in a certain sense, that the first decision to be made is really what do you actually want from an MBA program? Or what do you want? Or what are you looking for? And thinking about it in the context of your career development. Um, what do I want to get from it? How will it help my career? And then you start to think about, OK, what are the constraints that I'm working in? Can I or am I the type of person that needs to actually be in a full-time study environment in order to really be able to get the most from that experience? And do I have the luxury of being able to leave work in order to join a program full-time? Do I need to think about my existing commitments? Do I need to carry on working? Do I have familial responsibilities that I can't, that I requires me to, to balance the two? And then start looking at, okay, if I have to keep on working, then it's part-time or is an online program? which one works for me? How do I really want to study? And I so I think kind of ultimately, the format is almost at the end, because we, we all have quality MBA programs. Uh, and so therefore, that format decision comes at the end, it's really, what are you hoping to achieve? How will it help you meet your career goals? And what do you want to do afterwards? Um, so really, obviously, you know, full time is typically more for career switches for career enhancement is really good because you can keep on working, apply what you're learning 
while you are working so therefore see kind of like an immediate return and immediate benefit from it while then you're developing skills which will either take you further within your current organization or enable you to move to a different organization great thanks ashley anything else you'd like to add yeah i think great points so far and that not to be too repetitive in in some of the points that have come past um i think some of the big things is 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 just really to re-highlight is is make sure that you know what it is that you're looking to achieve by looking to pursue an MBA and um, take things into consideration around time commitments, how quickly you wanna get your program done. Is it something that you need to complete within 12 months? Is it something you need to complete in 18 months? Or do you have up to five years to complete this as, as part of your career journey? Um, I think other things to consider is, is what are the opportunity costs that you forego by taking a full-time program? Is it opportunity costs in terms of just your annual salary for that month? Are you considering the cost of the the, the cost of your, your salary, the cost of the program, the cost of um, uh, moving to an alternative location? Can you quit your job? Um, some other advice is, is, is just really make sure you do your research. Um, there's, there's a lot of different programs out there that are tailored to very specific industries. Um, uh, if you are looking for a little bit more of a generalist qualification, um, make sure that you're pursuing something that's not going to give you uh, something too specific and limit you to a, a particular space. Um, on our side, for, for, for the UCL side of things, is leverage the conversation opportunities that you have with our admissions team. We have dedicated admissions advisors that can talk you through what the program is, understand and unpack your motivations for the program, align that with what we have to offer, leverage those opportunities. I think they're wonderful spaces to, to make sure that you're getting the right fit for purpose or the right fit for what it is that you particularly need. Great, thank you. And Andreas, this is one of those tough questions that's, uh, it's tough to go last, but, <laughs> but I'm confident you can add some, some thoughtful points. So, so let's hear it. Yeah, I think my fellow panelists made some, some great points. Um, and I just, I just have to add, um, you know, if, if students that do a, a full-time program, they have to relocate for a year to, 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 another, to another city, uh, stop working for one year. So also the opportunity cost is, is something to consider when, when doing a full-time program versus doing a, a global uh, an, an online MBA. Um, at, at IE, once you graduate from, from the global online MBA, in the end, you'll receive the same diploma uh, as, as a full-time student, the same official and the same private diploma. So, so that, that doesn't change um, in, in those terms. But other than that, I mean, yeah, my, my fellow panelists made, made some great points. Um, and uh, that, yeah, that, that's... Yep. That's All right. Thank one you. One of the thing, one of the thing I forgot to add actually on this point is if you are looking to relocate, um, you know, then there might be considerations around the visa um, and whether you need to do a full time program. For example, in the UK, we have the um, the new graduate worker route visa, um, but you would so that would allow you to stay in the UK um, for two years after your program. But that would only apply if you'd done that two year. Uh, sorry, if you'd done that full time, um, if you'd done that full time program, then you could stay for for the two year graduate work a route visa and um, so if your goal is to for example switch sector and move to the UK then a full-time program might better equip you for that transition but actually if you're planning to stay in your current country then that then or you know or, or work in a different country altogether then that isn't going to be a factor that you really think about so that's just an, another factor and all of you know every country will have different rules around their, their visas and immigration so it's just something to research and make sure that you don't get caught out by thinking you know thinking you'll be able to easily switch to somewhere when actually there could be some visa considerations great yeah thank you for that last point um, all right, so let's talk admissions now. And Andreas, we'll start this one with you. Um, so just give us a basic uh, kind of walkthrough of what your admissions process is like, uh, how many application deadlines you have, uh, what the intakes are, um, anything you just want to share about kind of the admissions process. Perfect. Yeah, so we have two intakes every year, one in February and the other one in starting in September. We work in a rolling admissions process, meaning there's no exact deadlines for applications. We're always accepting applications until the program fills up, which usually happens a few months before, before the program starts. Um, and, and to apply, it's, it's, a pro, it's a process that's done completely online um, from wherever you are in the world, of course. It's, it's, a, it's a process where you just go to our website, click on the apply here button. It'll take you to, to the online application form where, where candidates have to fill out some basic information about you know, personal information and also about the professional uh, lives. 
And uh, they have to also attach several documents. These documents include letters of recommendation, um, undergraduate degree, school transcripts. Um, they also include a work verification letter in case of the Global Online MBA and um, a personal essay. Um, students are also, or candidates are also required to do an entrance exam. We accept the GMAT, the GRE, Executive Assessment, or IEGAT, which is our own entrance exam. And, and after they submit all these documents, then they're, they're invited to the, the formal interview with the admissions team. Great, thank you. Amy, we will move to you next. What can you tell us about the admissions cycle at Imperial? Um, so for our global online MBA, we have two intakes per year. We have a January intake and a September intake. Um, we have, for both of those intakes, we have admissions rounds. Um, so throughout the year, there's, there's, there's multiple um, application deadlines. Um, and then we um, obviously assess those applications um, by round and then shortlist candidates to interview. Um, most of, the uh, majority of our interviews um, for our MBA programs are conducted by alumni. Um, so that's a really good experience for our candidates because they actually get to have a conversation with someone who's done the program. Um, so they can, um, you know, they can ask about their, the, the, um, the experience that the, the, the alumnus has, has had, um, has had at Imperial and, um, Hear, hear kind of um, their their perspective rather than obviously the you know, the information that's uh, that's on our website and in our brochures. Um, so it's a good opportunity and it's very much a two way discussion. Um, I think normally our candidates really enjoy uh, enjoy those interviews and the opportunity to co connect with one of our alums. Um, and then following that, um, obviously we have the admissions committee um, meeting and decisions and um, and and yeah make make offers um, for for the intake that that um, for the relevant intake. Great. All right, Rebecca, let's uh, let's move to you. OK, so our admissions process, um, very, very simple. So basically, it is obviously a CV back, you know, the standard. Tell us about yourself. Uh, obviously, everyone does need to have a first degree and also a minimum of three years of work experience. So therefore, it's really looking at the story. We are we do not use admission tests. However, we do encourage them. So there may be certain instances where we say, actually, because of your background, because of the experience, we would like you to take an admission test. Um, additionally, there also could be English proficiency tests, depending again on, you know, so like where are you working, where are you living or where have you studied? So really kind of like that checks the academic boxes. We also interview everyone. So therefore those that kind of those applications we've received who go through, we interview them. Uh, we're also on a rolling admission. So therefore that is something which happens on an ongoing basis. So that means that we can respond very, very quickly to an application and give you, uh, you know, an, uh, uh, give you an indication of how we're proceeding with it. Um, I'm also kind of like super pleased in terms of, you know, our, um, in terms of the students that we attract. As I said, you know, we launched 47 students. We actually have 27 different nationalities in that inaugural class. So therefore, in terms of kind of like the ability or, or what we're attracting into our programs so with the admissions process is, is um, we're very, very pleased. Great. All right. And Ashley, uh, what about the admissions process? Absolutely. So I'm happy to chat through that. So our admissions process is done entirely online. Uh, some of the standard documentation things that you do need for those is, is the CVs. There's three micro essays that we require, uh, your transcripts, and, and uh, um, just perhaps a, a word of advice for anyone that's submitting transcripts. And I think probably the same for any uh, institution. Make sure you submit your transcript as well as the degree certificate. It certainly makes life a lot easier at times, um, but uh, certainly um, uh, we also require two, uh, two references. Those can be personal references from, from um, employers, mentors, colleagues. Uh, we do require those two professional references as part of the application process. There's a formalized interview process, which I'm sure we'll chat through a little bit later. Um, the, the application, as I mentioned, done entirely online. It is something that you'll have the ability to track your application and the progress of that through the application portal. So you'll have full access to that, knowing exactly where your application is sitting throughout. Uh, we do have four particular intakes uh, per year, and those, those intakes you can apply for um, on a rolling basis. You have the opportunity to apply right now for October intake or a year's, a year's intake ahead. Um, those, those intakes particularly looking at October, January, April, and July of each year, uh, where you'll have the ability to, to apply for those well in advance. Uh, we'll also make decisions on your applications well in advance, so it allows you that, that ability to, 
So if you are applying for October of next year, you have the ability now to get an outcome on that application and start your planning process, whether that be coming to, um, moving to another country, switching jobs, or um, whatever you need to plan in terms of the financial commitment for the program, you'll have the ability to do that. Great, thanks. So let's talk a little bit about what makes a compelling application um, for you all. So let's, let's start with uh, Amy. Amy, what makes a compelling application? What are you all sort of looking for in an applicant? Um, I think the important thing to say, first of all, is that there's no kind of one type of candidate or type of applicant that we're looking for. Um, we really value diversity. And, you know, one of the, the, the benefits of the MBA is bringing together people from lots of different backgrounds with lots of different um, types of experience, different perspectives. So there's no one, there's no mold that people need to fit in order to, to succeed in, in getting a place and doing well on our, on our program. But there are a couple of common, um, common themes that, that we would be looking for, common characteristics that we'd be looking for across applications. So, um, you know, throughout the application, you've got multiple, um, you've got a number of ways that you can demonstrate these things. You've got the CV, you've got um, mini um, sort of mini essays, um, and then you've got your interview, um, of course, as well. So we're looking for people who have a good academic standing. We're looking for people who are motivated, open-minded, um, curious, um, sort of want to challenge, um, want to challenge the status quo. We're looking for people who want to make an impact, make a positive impact in the world on society business um, so we want we want to see kind of how you plan to use your MBA what you're what you're going to do with it how you're going to how you're going to make a difference have a positive impact um, a couple of things I would say um, about the um, CV in particular is um, make sure to highlight your not only your career progression but also your impacts and achievements um, it's it's not just an opportunity to kind of don't just copy and paste your your job description we really want to know actually what you've done in that role um, you know what what impact you've had um, kind of how you've made a difference in in that role um, and then also we're interested to find out about you as a person and you know your things that you do outside of work so you know the the um, extracurricular activities or you know interests hobbies that kind of section of the CV um, you know tell us what you're passionate about and not just you know for example if you're volunteering with an organization or you're you're um you're spending time on an initiative tell us what you're actually doing don't just give us the name of of the the organization or the institution that you're that you're working with tell us actually what you're doing because otherwise it doesn't really give us much you know we, we don't have that context to know you know it doesn't really show us your passion or how you've actually um how you've actually been involved um so I think that's I think that's a few little snippets that I would say I'll, I'm happy to hand over to um, one of my uh, fellow panelists to expand further. Yeah. All right. Let's move to Rebecca next. Rebecca, what are some things that make a compelling application for you all? I'd say, I'd say just kind of like, you know, what is the goal of admissions? just kind of first of all basically the goal of the admissions is to ensure that everyone so that's you as a student the class and also the school are kind of best served by the decision made so therefore that the fit is mutual so think of in a certain sense the admissions process is really making certain that that you're selecting that each person within the school and the individuals are selecting each other in the right way um, so when we look at an application, we look at a candidate as a holistically. So kind of like looking at you, what you've done so far, what you've achieved to date, but also what you can bring to the class. And also, can we be confident that you're going to thrive and bring a unique perspective to the programme? So thriving, yes, there is an academic component. Um, so looking at kind of your track record, that gives an indication of thriving in terms of ability to cope with the academic rigour. But thriving is also being this active participant in your own learning journey, but also those of your classmates. Because effectively, what we want to know is like, have you given a lot of thought into thinking about how the program will help you realize your personal and your professional goals? Do you share our values? So our values are of community, curiosity, and also mutual respect. Because as a student in any MBA program at ESMT, you are undertaking this really transformational learning journey and you're partners in each other's development. So therefore we want to be sure that people we bring into our program share our values and therefore are not only growing themselves, but also supporting the development of other people. 
Um, and so obviously in terms of this mutual fit, we also want to be certain that we can help you actually achieve or help you move forward to your own career goals. Because this is, this is a case of where we want to make certain that we get the best fit by bringing you and ESMT together. Great. All right. All right, Ashley, let's let's move move to you next. What are you all looking for? What makes a compelling application? I think uh, the elements that make um, make a, an applicant's application compelling to us is the standard things in terms of looking looking at your 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 years with the work experience, uh, the qualification that you come with. Those things are, are standardized, important things that that we do need to consider. But at the same time, what we are looking at in, in terms of looking at your application holistically is we want to understand what is your motivation? Why do you want to pursue an MBA? What is the, what is the short and the long-term goals of you looking to achieve, uh, achieve an MBA and, and where does that take you? So we want to understand those things and we want you to be able to share with us. Um, what we are looking for in, in applications is, is that element of, of you and what makes you unique. Uh, we want, want each and every single one of our applicants to be, to be original. Uh, just give us an image of who you are authentically, um, whether that's through through the essays that you write and the things that you the components that you put in there, or or coming to coming to coming to the interview as your original self, because ultimately it's your original self that is going to be engaging with your classmates and the faculty members through through all of the live sessions. So we're looking for we're looking for for those elements. We're looking for the individuals that have done their research and understand how the, our particular program fits their particular need and, and, and how they've gone and, and, and done the research to go, well, this module really resonates with me or these series of modules resonates with me for X, Y, and Z reasons. And, and how does that apply in particular context? So really just looking for the overarching elements of, of the, the typical application requirements, as well as then getting to know exactly who the applicant is and, and bringing their authentic self, I think is a really important thing for us when we, when we are considering applications. All right, and Andres, what uh, what about it, IE? So we're looking for candidates, uh, or we're looking to build a class or a cohort that that's completely diverse, no, and that diverse in all the sense of the word. So we're looking, not 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 we're not talking not only in terms of nationalities. Uh, in, well, in fact, we had students coming from all over the world, from California to, to New Zealand. So it's a pretty diverse class in terms of nationalities, but also diversity in terms of of backgrounds and and, and different companies where students come from or, or where, where they're working. Um, so we're looking for students that can add value in class. As I said before, it's a very collaborative program. So we want students to not only learn from professors, but also from their fellow classmates. So what can other students expect to learn from you? That's, that's also a very important variable for, for us. Um, we're looking for students that align with the values of IE. Uh, these values are uh, technolog technological immersion, entrepreneurial mindset, uh, diversity, and, and humanities. Um, so, so in these can also be expressed all throughout the, the admissions process and in the, in the interview and, and the motivational essay. Um, and of course, we're looking for students that have great achievements up there uh, in their careers um, and the, from which other students can, can learn from, basically. Great, all right. And so we're at the end of our time now. Uh, we've got about two minutes left. So I'm gonna just throw a curveball question at you all and I'm gonna ask it to Rebecca first. In one word, how would you describe your program, your online MBA program? So one word to describe it all. Um, I'm stalling so Rebecca can have Fun. a few minutes to think about it. Oh, <laughs> she's ready. All right. Fun. Let's do it. Hard work and fun. Great. Okay. Ashley, let's move to you next. One word. Innovative. You all are fast. Okay. Andreas. Flexible. And Amy. Gonna go with um, challenging, and I don't just mean challenge. I mean challenging yourself, because Ashley stole innovative from me. <laughs> That's the problem with going last. Um, all right. Well, thank you all for your time. Um, thank you very much for being here. We appreciate it. Um, and for everyone else, this is just the first panel of a ton today. Um, so be sure to keep coming back and checking it out. Um, check out our online MBA hub at poetsandquants.com. And again, uh, thank you all. Thank you all for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Good day. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye-bye.